As the natural born and well-rounded cinephile that I am, I of course have a letterbox account where I judge movies based off of the gender of the main character, the nationality of the characters, and even how much I hate men. And every single opinion that I have on every single film should be held as gospel that everyone should be begging to just get a simple glimpse of. So yeah, I'm pretty much just a typical letterbox user. I actually quite like the app because it helps to get as many outside perspectives as possible to compare against your perspective just so I can have a better understanding of what I think. But most importantly, I like the idea of having all of my opinions on movies in one central place. It has helped me grow in my understanding of film, and even my understanding of what kind of critic I am. And it has also helped me to understand masterpieces such as <laughs> The Greatest Showman, Max Steel, and also <gasps> Aquaman. Now this is something I can get behind! One thing I have tried to work on the most as a film critic is the consistency of my voice. If there's anything that I believe a critic should be, it's consistent. If people see that you contradict yourself constantly, if people see completely different ratings for two movies that are very similar, then I believe it delegitimizes the understanding behind your thoughts. Granted, this is actually something that can happen, but it is very rare. And it also makes it confusing for the viewers who usually share your opinions. Now this might seem like a no-brainer, but I have found it very difficult to develop my own distinct voice. But the legitimacy of your opinion can also depend on which ratings you are consistently using on the platform. Usually the first thing I like to look at whenever I enter a new letterbox user's domain is the chart that is showing their respective ratings all next to each other. Because let me tell you, there are some interesting statistics for some of these people. For instance, take a look at this fine gentleman's ratings chart. Now it's quite obvious that this person is much more harsh on most movies that they see than the average person. But this kind of consistency makes it really hard for someone like me who's just stumbled upon his account to be able to know his actual thoughts on a movie. Shawshank Redemption? Uh, man, that was alright. Pulp Fiction? Uh, could have been a bit better. Oh hey, what is this? A Spirited Away? Oh yes, yeah, slap that thing with another 6 out of 10. Now of course everyone is entitled to their own opinions on all things film, but to me this kind of rating system makes it hard to judge their actual thoughts. This person is definitely consistent, but the consistency makes it so that films that they would probably highly recommend are pushed to the side by anyone looking at this rating. If I were to guess, they would probably really highly recommend Pulp Fiction, Spirited Away, and Shawshank Redemption, because that is one of the highest ratings that they use very infrequently. You just have to interpret it a little bit. Another example of a weird rating system is from this fine film professor. Now, I don't know about you, but it seems pretty apparent to me that this guy's throwing out 10 out of 10s like candy on Halloween night. Doctor Sleep? Heck yeah, best movie I've ever seen in my entire life. 10 out of 10. Ready or not? Oh, um, yeah, I think it deserves a 10 out of 10. Oh, yeah, perfect movie. Oh, oh my gosh, is that... Is, is that Spider-Man Far From Home? Oh, oh, please tell me I have another 10 out of 10 somewhere. Ah, ah yes, perfect. Oh my gosh, it, it deserves it more than any other movie I think I've ever seen. Now, this is another example of someone who's consistent... But then again, this consistency is just weird. Now, of course, this is just how these people like to measure their enjoyment of film. And this doesn't even mean that these opinions are useless. You might just have to interpret it a little bit more. If this guy rates something 7 out of 10, you know that it's going to be a grand old time. And if this guy rates something, um, I don't know, a 2 out of 10, then you know it's going to be the absolute worst piece of crap you've ever seen in your entire life. And this is honestly why I love Letterboxd, because there are just so many people with so many different outlooks on how to judge and criticize films. And come on, let's be honest. My opinion is the only real one on this whole website.
Now in all my years of scouring the lands and letterbox accounts of this world, there is one that I consider to be one of the most informative while also being one of the most consistent rating systems. And that is from a delectable man known as YMS. Now this guy has a YouTube channel called Your Movie Sucks and he's actually pretty great. I would recommend anyone who watches this go watch that guy's videos right this instant. But what's funny is that he's not even on Letterbox, but he does post his ratings on IMDB. Ugh. I'm just so glad that something like Letterbox exists because I don't think I could look at that interface for very long without having my brain explode. Anyways, a fan has made the effort to transfer all of his ratings to Letterbox, and it's pretty great to have them on there to compare. The fantastic thing about his rating system is that he has incredibly realistic standards for every single rating 1 through 10. He manages to save his higher ratings for truly exceptional films that go above and beyond in his eyes, and saves his lower ratings for films that are truly diarrhea film. This gives much more levity to the 10 out of 10s and the 1 out of 10s that he dishes out to films he deems worthy. Let's go back to this fine gentleman. If a movie comes out and he rates something a 10 out of 10, I doubt that I'm gonna be as likely to be excited about it as if someone like YMS rates something a 10 out of 10. There are so few movies that he's given 10s and 1s that it shows a very natural progression all the way from 6 to 10 and 4 to 1. His consistency is on point, which shows a lot about how his thoughts on a film translate over to his rating. I always know that whatever number a film gets from him, it's an accurate reflection of his thoughts on the film. Now, I know that this entire video and just all the things that I've said might not seem like to be a very important conversation to be having, but it's just a fun little thing that I have noticed over my career as an illustrious film critic. Alright. Now that's that, I'm gonna go back to arguing with people on Letterboxd.